Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to learn how to use the grid display property in Webflow. So grid is a really great way to organize your content and make it display nicely and evenly. You can change the dimensions for images and text and make sure everything lays out the way you want it to and you can even scale it accordingly in different screen sizes. Grid is such a great feature and if you wanna know more about it, stick around. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got this chunk of content and I have the display property set to grid mode. And that allows me to have some even boxes. You can change the dimension and tell certain cells to be greater width than the other ones so they're not all equal if you want to design them differently. And then we're just gonna show you how to build this out. It's a great way to organize your content and make sure everything looks nice and clean. All right, so we're back in our project here. In the last video, we went over these card rotations and how to make them spin. Really quick, if you are following along, I did clean up one thing. If it means anything to you, we did our card wrappers here and I added a little transition all 100 milliseconds. So that way, before it was a little clunky when it was rotating, it was a little kind of catch. But now I wanna add that thousand dollar transition. Dollar, ooh, nice. A thousand millisecond transition forces it to take its time and it smooths this, the turnaround there. So if yours is catching a little bit, you can just add that. Okay, so moving forward here, we're gonna to go to our body and we're gonna add a new section. We can call this uh, overview section since it'll be our overview of all the different materials about the movie. Overview section. And that's at the bottom here because now everything kind of stacks relatively. It just keeps adding to the document flow. So I'm gonna make the height just 100 pixels for now so we can see what we're working with inside of it. It could be auto once we're all done and then we know what size our content is. But for now, so we can see the space, I'll set a fixed height. And one other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the body. I'm gonna change our background color from white to black. That way, just a little more dramatic, keeps it darker. And in our loading screen too, there's this ugly white bar, but now it should be black and fade in with the video, so that would be nicer. So that's all good. Back in our overview section, I'm gonna add a container. So containers, you guys, are really great ways to center your content. So something in web design, if you are on a website that has a paragraph or chunks of text, as you increase your uh, browser size, you don't want the text to keep growing with that because then the reader's reading back and forth and it's hard work for the eyes to keep up with content that's wide. So a container is a great way to kind of add some auto margin on either sides and it keeps it condensed. So even as your browser size scales, anything that lives inside a container will stay in the middle of the document so the reader can just quickly dart back and forth and doesn't have to do any extra work. So we're gonna do that for our, our grid system too. So we have this container, which let's name it, and this will be our overview container. And really what it serves as is just the way to keep our content centered so it doesn't expand when our browser expands. So inside our overview, I'm gonna add a new grid. And there we have it, that's our grid. Hope you liked the video, guys. So in our grid, we obviously want to add some content and make it nice, right? First thing, I'll just call this overview content grid and class name. And if you ever wanna edit your grid in Webflow, all you have to do is click on this little toggle and it brings up this window. And here you can affect the cell different sizes. You can uh, adjust them like this manually. You can add another row, you can add another column. The layout here makes it pretty simple and it all tells you how wide everything is. So right now they're equal, one FR, one FR. And you can always click done when you're done editing. And a nice little feature that's kind of fun, you can change the color. It's interesting how they thought this was important to add these five specific colors. I don't know why, but you know what? If you wanna have a magenta grid today, you can do that. So let's keep that for now, that's nice. And it shows you all your grid properties on the right as well. So it'll show you what you currently have as the columns, how much space is in between the rows and the columns themselves. You can lock it so the gap stays the same even as you scale. So looking at our grid, we're gonna to wanna to be building this right here, just to reference again. So we've got, you can tell we have, it's three by three, it's pretty easy. So we've got three columns that span three rows and the content takes up different widths and all of that, of course, but it's basically just a three by three grid. So we can already set that back in our property and it's already set that way, great. So three by three. 
In our first cell here, I'm going to add a div block. You can drag it in there. And something I like to do is over here, when we position auto and manual, there's two properties on your uh, a div you put in here. If you have auto, it'll just keep filling the next available space in your grid. And this is great if you have just kind of uniform boxes and content spanning the width of your grid, but because ours will be varying widths and heights and as we scale down, we're gonna wanna change whether something takes up two rows or three rows. And I just like setting it to manual because then you can just drag the end of your, your cell here. So now I can have this div be the whole width. I can change it if I want it to be like half the column of the grid like that. I just like being able to manually control it. And if you set it at this breakpoint size, it trickles down. So it's just easiest to kind of start that way, for me at least. Okay, so with this div block, I'm gonna call this overview grid div. And this div will be the base for all of our cells. So they'll have some similar styling elements. So this is our initial overview grid div. And later on when we expand everything, we're gonna keep copying that out and then fill it with new content, add some combo classes so they can stand apart and be styled differently. But this is our base sort of grid div styling. So inside here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an H, a header. So I'm gonna make this an H2. I'm gonna make something else, the H1 in a bit. I'm gonna make the title of the section an H1. But for Google and screen readers and things, the H, depending on which heading you make it, an H1 through six, it shows the hierarchy of that piece of text. And with one being the top priority, that means it's the most important piece of text on the page. And then like subheadings would be H2s. And as the content lets gets, gets less and less relevant, it'll trickle down. So H2 is pretty solid for what we're doing here. This is just kind of going to be the, the information header of what this piece of content is. So if you look here, our first one we have is release date. So I'm going to make this release date. And I'll name this info heading. And I can give this a just kind of a grayish color. Let's do DBDBD. All right. It's just a little brighter. And I'm going to center that. And in our overview grid div as well, I'm going to add another element, another div block. And this will just be a horizontal divider. So I'll just call this horizontal divider, obviously. And this is a little trick you can use to make rectangles in certain shapes, especially for dividing sections of content like this. A lot of people do this. So I can make the width here 200. And I'll just make the height something a little like two pixels and once I fill it in and give it a background color give it that same dbdb and I'm just gonna add that it's called Gainsborough apparently okay great and you see now we have this little div block that's actually just kind of an a big bold underlined but it's really just a school like a big rectangle that we created and make sure this is centered I'm gonna go to the overview grid div I'm going to display this flex and I can display it vertically, and I can center it and align it in the middle. There we go, so now all the content will always live in the middle. Great, and there's one more thing we're gonna to add to this overview grid. I'm gonna add another heading, and now this is not as important as the H2. It's definitely on an H1, so I think H3 is appropriate, and I can call this info subheading. So we have the info heading and info subheading, and we're gonna use this class for each of our different div blocks, so it's good to set the base here so we can reuse these and I will call this so this is just the release date of the film which is 12 19 1997 12 19 great and I don't want to give this the same color because I kind of want to create some separation so I'll just give this silver you can tell it's a little bit more muted than the white above it great I'm going to take away a little bit of the top margin of the subheading here just to bring it a little closer. Great, looks even now. Okay, so we've got our first chunk of content there. And I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna give it a background image. So down here, click image. And I uploaded some files and images of all the things that we'll be using in this overview section. So first thing I'm gonna make this, this nice picture of Jack and Rose. I'm going to set it to cover and center. So that way we can see our image nicely. I'm also gonna change the height of our overview grid div. I'm gonna give it something a little structured, that way we can at least see the content that's living inside it. Great, so height of 250, width is auto for now. And it's starting to take shape, but obviously it's very hard to read this text. So let's add a color overlay. 
So the same location, we are in our overview grid div. We have that background image. I'm going to add another image property. I'm going to click color overlay here. And honestly, this looks pretty good. I'm just going to keep this really faded kind of black gray color. Okay, so that's our first grid done. Next thing I'm going to do, make sure we're in our grid. I'm going to add another div. It fills in the space there because it's still automatic, but I'm going to click this to manual, like I said before, so we can drag it later if we need to. I'm going to give this the same class as overview grid div. So you see it takes on the, the flex box properties, it takes on the height of 250 pixels, and it takes on the background overlay and picture. All this is great, but then if we add a little combo class, we can change the specifics while keeping the base one. And if we were to change the base one later, this will also change some of that base styling. So I'm going to do the same thing and add that H2. I'll make this director. And if I give it the class of uh, info heading, it absorbs the color. And I can do the another div block with the horizontal divider class, hmm. which is not coming up. Did I not name it? I did not name it. Okay, so let me just name this horizontal divider really quick. Great, and then I can go back to this one, make this horizontal. There he is. And then I'll add another div or a heading. This one's an H3, and this will be info subheading. Did I not give this class? I did not. Info subheading, great. This one is also info subheading. And this will say James Cameron. I'm going to change the font in here really quick. I had something, I think the Palatino, this one's nice. So first I'm going to add a combo class to this, right? So it's absorbing the styling because it has the overview grid div class. But if we want to change anything specific while keeping that base styling, we got to just add a combo class. So I'm going to add a director up here. And that way it'll keep the height, it'll keep the overlay, but we can change the specifics. So this image. All right, we've got our overlay as well still there. So just to save some time, I'll go ahead and fill out all the rest of the content in this grid and then I'll circle back and let you know what I did. Okay, welcome back. As you can see, I finished building out everything here for you. So we had that base setting on the overview grid div. We used that for most of the other ones and then we added combo classes. So we've got director here, we've got running time. This was the plot, just a rose in the hat image, Oscars and box office and the produced by people. And one thing I also went back and did was in the overview grid div, I kept the height as auto, but I made the minimum height as 250. So the, at minimum, each of these will be 250 pixels high to keep things uniform. But if the content inside requires a little extra space, it will expand to the automatic amount of space that it needs to be. And then the plot here, this is an example of one of the cells that I shifted over. So I could move it like that, which would squish it down. I could move it like that, which is what we look nice at. I can move it like this. There's different ways to play around with it, and you can create some cool shapes and overlapping imagery here and text, and Grid is a really useful tool to do that with. But for this one, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Another thing that I did was I went down here and I changed the opacity of all of the overview grid divs. So I made sure I was on the first one and I changed the base opacity to 75%. So that way they're all a little faded. And then when you go to the hover state, I change it to 100%. So then when you cursor over anything, it'll fade into the light and you'll be able to see it and highlight it based on whatever you're focusing on at that point. Okay, look at our little grid, see? You can customize this even more, add whatever you like, but for now, this is a great little starting spot. Now I'm just gonna go back to our overview section. I'm gonna add some other properties and add the title here. So I'm gonna add an H1. This is why the other ones are lower than H1 because this will be our heading. I'm gonna call this overview. Gonna make sure this is above our grid here. Got a lot of stuff. I'm just gonna minimize our grid. Heading one will be up here. And I'll change the class name. So I think I press enter here. There we go. This will be. I'll make it a little generic because we will use this styling again for the other sections. So over section overview. Uh, no, section heading. I'm gonna make this our bad script font. I'm gonna make the font size. 7.5M. Alright, so I'm going to make the color here D3, 
C268. Wonderful. Gonna add that to our swatch here. It's called Dark Khaki. Okay. And right now you see how this lives inside of our container. Let's actually move this. So we've got overview section, overview container. This can actually live outside the container. It looks pretty good over there. And this way it'll always be outside of it. This one doesn't have to be centered like the rest of the content within the container. You can see all the space above here. I think before we had set a, a height for our ticket poster section. Let's just get rid of that. We had put it as a thousand. We can change that back to auto now that we're done. Great, now that condenses the space somewhat. Let's add a little margin to the top of our overview section. Just so we can distinguish the space here. I'm gonna change the weight of this. It looks a little heavy, I'll make this normal. And that's pretty much it, that's our grid. If we click on the grid itself, you'll see how up here in display, it's actually displayed as grid, but if we had a bunch of divs with all this content inside, we could display it flex, even though it looks horrible. We can make it somewhat better with the vertical. We could just display a block. We could display in the line block, but by displaying grid, look how nice it evens everything out. But ours looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Everything flows nicely. It's organized. It's neat. We've got some consistent heights here, and it gives a nice little condensed look at the movie and what to expect in the movie and just kind of the highlights. Yeah, it has a hover effects and it changes the opacity a little bit, so it brightens it up when you're going over and reading about things. We've got our title section here. It's coming together. Another section down. Next thing we're going to do is show you how to use a slider. This is just a sliding kind of container of content that can play automatically. We're going to go through how to display our quotes, just a little section the user scrolls past with some quotes on a slider, some little Lottie animations in there as well. So if you want to learn how to do that, stick around and we'll do the next one.